welcome one and all um we have a new platform that we're um that we're using for the first time so actually this is the first time i'm using Streamyard because i think this is a an essential reasoning or conversation that um we must have so sorry for the delay yeah sorry for the delay but um i had a, an exam so i wanted to complete that before i um you know you know jump into this conversation because i did not want to run the risk of doing the interview and then doing the um, exam and you know I i'm not sure how long the interview is going to go on for so i i got that out of the way all right so i apologize for the um the delay and um i think we are we have a new platform i can actually see you all in the chat delroy big up yourself um david um you know emotep moji i see you yeah so we about we, 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 uh, 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 miss hall i see you miss hall big up yourself so let me know if you are hearing me um because the first time i'm using this platform my my, my brother g cole actually and joanna actually you know introduced me to this platform and i think i think it's going to work fine without any glitches yeah so let me know if you are hearing me um um you know and we can we can we can roll all right so um why am i ha having this conversation with elaine first and foremost i'm a father um I have four girls and three boys. And I think as a father, it is the right thing to do to listen and speak less. I think as a father, you know, you know, who, you know, is a strong advocate against um, people that assault people or hurt people. But with that said, I'm still um, very mindful that people are innocent until proven guilty. But that does not stop us from having the conversation. Yeah, I think the conversation is important because we must listen to people who come forward. We must listen. We have to get this whole thing out of our mind that shut up and Nobody say nothing. Because you have to remember what we say around people um, goes a long way or go a long way with people coming forward. And we want people to come forward. We want people to, you know, share your know, share experience. Let us know what happened. So we, the public, you understand, not calling out anyone who has not been convicted of, you know, being a rapist or a pedophile. But let us hear the conversations. Don't be afraid. I don't let people who are abused or people who claim that they are abused feel afraid to come forward understand um so with that said i chose to um speak to elaine i spoke to her behind the scene um last year after dr love spoke to her i spoke to her and i spoke to richie because you know richie is my brethren and this comes to show you that it doesn't matter if someone is my brother. You know, I'm not going to be the one to say, OK, he's my brother. And, you know, I'm not going to speak on the issue. But I'm going to be very objective if there is no. If there's nothing for me. To go after a person. Yeah, so Brother Richie made a statement. And it is only fear for who have not heard the statement as yet to listen to what um, Richie had to say. So let us see if we can pull it up. I remember just using this platform. So let me know if everything good, if you can see it, and we roll. So let us listen to what Richie had to say. Hello, everyone. My name is Richard Stevenson, a.k.a. Richie Stevens. And I'm here today to address some allegations that you might see going around about me. 
Initially, I said I wasn't going to say anything. But now, I think I owe it to my family, to my friends, and to my fans to come out and set the record straight. Miss Elaine Lim came out on social media and made some allegations against me. Some of what she said is true. But I am here to tell you what is true. One, she was on tour with me in Australia in 2019. Two, she made a formal report to the police against me. Three, she did a rape kit. But what she did not tell you, a thorough investigation was done by the Australian police. I was detained. They took a statement from me, a statement from her, a statement from other people, and there were cameras in the vicinity. While I was detained, I called my attorney, Mr. Christopher Townsend, who advised me on what to do. And at the end of that investigation, they found her allegations were simply baseless. You know what is true? I'm really sorry for her to know that she would go that far to try and get some recognition. We're living in a time where people are doing certain things. We see it every day. Some people believe that likes are far more important than the truth. And we're here today to bring the truth out. Check this out. She claimed that I came back to Jamaica and run on the, to the media and give them fabricated stories. I have not done not even one interview. I have not posted a video about the incident. I didn't do nothing like that. The only thing happened is my attorney, Mr. Christopher Townsend, wrote a letter that I posted on my IG. That's all I did. Now, this is in contrast to what she has done. You have to remember this, you know, people. This woman is a professional video editor. And if you take a keen look at her video, you see the sheet behind her. You see she talk in a certain type of way. This is nothing but a stage performance, a whole stage production. No, you don't need to stage the truth. All right, people, let's take a look at something where she said. She said in her country, I would be guilty until proven innocent, which is not even true. But that tells you how warped her mind is. She also took the time to invite the media to link her personally. Clearly, she had a boss. Now, ladies and gentlemen, she even trying to make it seem as if she didn't get justice in Australia. Australia is one of the most serious countries in the world when it comes to sex crimes. Now, I'm a very serious supporter of bringing sexual predators to justice. But her allegations are simply not true. There are people with serious issues as a result of sex crimes. So when people like her come with all these lies, it does not help the movement. I am Richard Stevens, and that's my piece. Good great. So um that's that's from um Richard Richard Stevens. Um Richard said something that I, I want to um shed a little bit of light on. I think we are misled to believe that Australia is one of the countries that is firm or is um, one of the countries that there are no problems or less problems with um, these types of, 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 of cases. I think, I think if you should um, look at some of the, the, what's going on in Australia right now, there was a journalist who just had a big demonstration in Australia um and something that happened with her within the parliament and it, it caused the whole thing in australia so this 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 thing that we this narrative that australia is 
one of the countries, and I used to believe it until I did my own research. So you can maybe look at the whole Australian um, justice system, Australia's justice system, and decide for yourself. So without getting too much into what I have to say, I want to bring on uh, Miss um, Lim, Elaine Lim. All right. So we can have a public discourse um, with her. All right. Hi. Hi. Um, How are you? Good day, everybody. Yes, because I was thinking about the timing back in Jamaica. I'm good. I'm good. Um, well, um, before before you get before you, before you get into it, um, I just want to um, let you know that I. And, and I spoke, I told everyone prior to this that I spoke to you off the air. And isn't that something mm -hmm. that I'm trying to hide from anyone? That I speak to you because I'm yep. not ashamed or afraid to speak to you mm -hmm. and I also speak to Richie. And I told you that Richie is my brethren. Yep. Yeah. However, I think you should be heard. Yeah. I think yep. you should, I think you should have a say. Richie said his piece yesterday, and I think you did some videos prior. But um, there are questions that many of us as Jamaicans and around the world, fans of Richie, Richie Stevens, have. Yeah. And I think you, you are the best person to ask, um, to give us a little bit more information on what really happened. Yeah? So mm -hmm. if you could walk us through some of the things that, um, that happened. And, um, you know, feel free. Speak to the people. Okay, let me breathe. It's always very traumatizing when you actually have to recap it, but I do understand that people need to hear and listen to what exactly happened. So I'm sure you've heard the Singapore part whereby, you know, when he first met me, he stuck his tongue down my throat, during which my partner saw and he had to be held back. And then after that, I'm just going to... When, when, when you say your partner, um, you're, you're the person you're, 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 your fiancé saw? Yes. And he really wanted to punch him because, you know, everybody could see that he was forcing himself onto me. So someone actually was there that witnessed witnessed this. Yes. And okay. not just him. He actually asked around because it was an event that we brought him in Singapore to this very high class place called Sela V. That I was assisting with, you know, several aspects of the setup, the event. Because I was very much assisting my friend, Asia One, who, you know, is based here in Singapore. And we were working with Richie Stevens at a point of time. That was the first time I met him. And then we didn't really keep in contact much until, again, the next time of the meeting was in Jamaica, where I was also following along my friend Asia One. And I was doing documenting of this journey, this beautiful journey of bringing reggae music or bringing Jamaican culture into Asia. So she was doing some recordings, music were being planned, and I was just there documenting everything. During which nothing really funny happened until one night where when she was asleep, he tried to kiss me again. And then during which, pushed him away. I said, stop. And he stopped. So that's twice. After that, came back, did our thing. For people who think that I actually went on the tour for him, I didn't. The tour in question is called Jamaican Flavor Tour. So that was, I think, in 
timeline was, I think September, they were announcing that they were going to New York, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, Japan, and then I think New York again, if I'm, if I'm not wrong. So the Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia, that part of the tour were organized by my friend. So after that, when I was on the tour, New York, I didn't follow them. But when um, I followed along, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, I was helping with administration. I was also doing a little bit of documenting because this was supposed to be a whole documenting of a journey of collaboration of bringing Jamaican music into Asia. Now, Australia, where Asia had own shows, but she also was on Jamaican flavor, sorry, not, what was that? Uh, JMFF, Jamaican Music and Food Festival. So those were the two artists on the bill, Richie and Nisha. Each of them had their own slots. I was there, not part of Richie's team. I was there for major one. I was there to document the journey of bringing Jamaican music into Asia, of making sure that this whole journey is captured when Indonesian collaborations were in place. All right, so I hope this explains how I end up from Singapore to them being with him in Australia. I was not involved in any of the accommodation planning, but we were housed together, me, Asia, and Reggie. We had separate rooms, but a common living space. And before everybody addressed, why am I so naive to be in the same place with him? Well, The extent that I thought he would go to was he would try to flirt with me, that he would try to kiss me, because these are all things that he has done. But also, every single time, when during that point of time, I said no. He respected that no. So I have then in thought in my head, that, okay, when he says, when I say no, I'm going to be respected. I'm going to be safe. I end up calling him an uncle because he ends up calling me his niece. And I was like, okay. I should feel that, you know, we're like family. My friend was like his sister. And this would feel that he would protect me. He won't hurt me. Maybe he'll try something funny, try to flirt. But beyond that, nothing else. So that was the line that we all thought was the threshold. So throughout this whole part of Australia's tour, I was never left alone until the 12th of November, 2019. But I was, because my friend, Wanted to go to the studio, do her thing, record her stuff. I stayed behind to edit a music video that I was way, way, way behind on. All right. As I was editing my music video, this whole thing happened in the living room. 
So there were, it was a white living room, almost like a two room space. I was sitting on the dining table area, which it was side here. The other side was the sofa where he was sitting. So when I was working, as I was working, of course, I only focus on working, right? But I also heard what was going on. He was having phone calls, not sure who to, but was talking about his mom, said that he was worried about his mom. And then I was like, oh, that's sad. I hope everything's okay. That was me thinking. But I didn't say anything. I just continued working until he asked for a hug. So, okay. I accept. I can give you that hug. So I went there. Gave him a hug. I apologize for the extra noise around. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So, so what? As, let me let me just ask you quickly. So, why you, you you thought it was okay to give him a hug when he asked for a hug? For a hug. Well, I thought it was okay because I felt pity for him. I felt sympathy for him that he was worried for his mom, and because he is worried for his mom, and he's upset with his mom. I feel that, okay, a hug should be safe, you know? A hug should be safe. Nothing else should come from it. You needed some consolation. That's it. You needed something, you know, just to calm yourself down. Okay, hug. I trusted that he had a boundary. I trusted that I would be safe when I gave him that hug. But what I didn't expect after that was how he manipulated me to the point but he then stuck a finger in me. And that's when I got really, really, really scared. When you, when you say he manipulated you, can you explain a little bit how? Well, first he asked for a hug. And then the sofa was tight. So it was very tough to have a sit-down hug. So he asked me to lie on him. To hug. I trusted him. After that, he told me, oh, um, you're too heavy. Okay? You said you are too heavy? Yeah. I'm too heavy. So now I lie down. Okay. I was really, I had a bit of a red flag coming with me that point in time, but I just told myself, okay, he has a line that he wouldn't cross. He's upset with his mom. He is an uncle, right? You should protect your family. You should be safe. Okay. So then I laid down. But then I realized that I got placed in a very compromising position. So when the finger came in, caught me off guard. I panicked. I got scared. And the only thing at the point of time, I can't explain why, but I could only think of going to the toilet. I needed a toilet. I told him I need to go to the toilet. I didn't feel safe to run out. I felt like something bad was happening. And
Sorry. Take your time. It's still triggering. Yeah, take your time, sister. For those people who think I'm acting, it's not. Don't worry about what people have, have to say. Say your piece. Okay. So he stuck his finger down. I panicked. I panicked. I could only think of going to the toilet. It was cold at that time. I'm in a foreign country. I cannot run. So I could only go to the toilet. Went to the toilet. It was so disgusting. Try to wash myself. I locked the door because I was so afraid that she would barge in. I peed and I had a huge frown when my irritable bowel syndrome kicked in because I was so stressed. I was so, so stressed. And after that, I tried to extend my, my time in the toilet. I was basically just taking my hands and making plopping noises just so that it sounds like I'm still busy. When he called out, what's taking you so long? I got terrified. I was terrified. I didn't dare to come out of the toilet. But at the same time, I know I have work to do. I'm supposed to get done with things. I can't stay in there forever. And actually, he said something funny to me before I went to the toilet, before he allowed me to go to the toilet. He said, when you come back, take off your pants, you hear? We have to loosen you up a little. I was utterly shocked, confused scared. But the one thing that I told myself, I am not giving you what you want. So when I locked the toilet, went to my room, quickly put on more pants, and went back to the dining table to continue my work. Because I'm going to be answerable for it. If it was not done. So that was one part. After that, when I sat down, did my work, he was constantly asking me to come back. And I was scared. I was really, really, really scared. And after the first time the finger went in, my brain was no longer even thinking straight. This is not something that I expected. I didn't want it to go further. So, when he constantly called me back, I was terrified. I didn't want him to come and drag me. I thought that if I would just sit with him, he would either apologize for what he did, or that nothing else would happen. Because he did tell me this. Sit with me, nothing is going to happen. <laughs> 